Hello everybody, welcome to Fruitful Trees. As you can see behind me, I am in this really cool yard, but it's planted like a mango grove. It's really cool. I am at a beekeeper's house or a bee remover's house. So this is gonna be really cool. I drove past this house and uh, as you can see the streets right there, and I saw all these mango trees planted close together, or I don't know how close, but they're big trees. I knew they were old, so I wanted to talk to the owner and find out about his trees and what else he had. I did some research. I found out this guy has a, a honey a business or a bee business. He removes bees. Uh, and so I, I met him and uh, we came here today and we're going to do a, a video about all his fruit trees. He just doesn't have mango trees, so this is going to be really cool. So here we go. All right, everybody, here we are at another property. This is Eric, and as you see his shirt, it says to be or not to be, it is not an option. Eric, welcome to Fruitful Trees. Thank you. I drove past your house and I saw all these wonderful trees and I asked uh, somebody about you and they said that you have a business where you actually uh, remove beehives, right? I do uh, live bee removal. Uh, we take bees out of residence homes, gardens, trees, just about everywhere, uh, high rise buildings. Uh, bring them back, get them established, uh, requeen if needed, and uh, you know, uh, keep them, you know, good genetics and that type of thing for good honey production and pollination. Okay, so you make honey, do you sell honey locally? Is that I, I do. Uh, basically, I'm a cottage food industry um, where I process everything at home here, bottle it at home, and sell it to the end user. I can't be in under cottage industry. I can't sell to Joe's Market and have him retail it. It has to be the end user. Sure. And, uh, okay, that's wonderful. Do you teach? Do you have classes about beehives as well? Uh, well, I am the president of Palm Beach County Beekeepers. Um, we do, uh, Palm Beach County Beekeepers does a lot of um, uh, 101 classes and 201 classes and education about bees. That's their main goal is to, to educate and make people familiar about bees and the do's and not what to do type things. In terms of pollinating fruit trees, what's better, bees or flies? Depends on the fruit tree. Uh, certain trees do very well with bees. Other, like mangoes, they mainly I believe it's uh, flies that do the pollination. Even though this year, for some strange reason, my bees were very active in the mango trees this year. And uh, how do you know that? I watch. And, okay. Uh, when there, when you have the blooms, you will see the bees in the blooms, and you can actually tell whether they're gathering uh, pollen, whether they're gathering nectar, and certain plants do more nectar, other plants do more pollen. And when we say flies do good on mango trees for pollinating, are we talking the common house fly or other flies? You know, I'm, I'm not quite sure of the, the, the species of fly, but you know, it looks like regular house flies to me, but I don't know for sure. Sure, okay. All right, well, let's see. I know you have a good amount of trees there. How big is your property? Uh, 2.69 acres. Okay. Um, I have close to about 150 different trees. Uh, not different, but trees total. Uh, with, you know, like I have uh, mangoes. I have like typically about three of each variety that I have. Um, we have the lychees, but unfortunately with the mite, they're actually going to be on their way out because <laughs> they're not productive and I can't. I, can't, I don't spend the time to do the work needed to uh, take care of that problem that they have with that. Uh, with the mite, yeah. yeah. So when you moved here, uh, were there any trees? I planted every tree on this property except for the oak tree here, a couple of the uh, cabbage palms, and the pine trees. So some of your trees here are not edibles. You have a mixture. Well, there's, yeah, there's a, some native, you know, oaks and, and pine trees, not a whole lot. Mostly all the fruit trees and the flowering trees I've, I've planted. And how long have you been here? Uh, going on, tw it's a, actually over 20 years, 2003. Now you said you have some trees that are three varieties of the same variety. Yeah, so, of, of mainly the mangoes. Okay, so when you're, I know back then there weren't as many known varieties around, but when you were planting them, I mean, one tree gives a lot of mangoes. What made you decide to plant three? Did you have the intention of selling them or what? I, I do, we do sell mangoes when it's mango season. Okay. You know, we typically, you know, we sell, this year we, we did pretty well. Uh, I mean, we had a bumper crop without a doubt. I think the only problem is when I have a bumper crop, so does everybody else. Sure. <laughs> so there was quite a few mangoes everywhere. Sure. So. And uh, do you have your mangoes and your other fruit trees on irrigation here? 
Uh, actually, everything's hand water or or just natural. Okay. So I, I've got I I bought the stuff to actually set up irrigation and just never did it. Okay. Uh, priorities kind of it didn't become a priority list. Okay. Which sometimes I wish I had. <laughs> Why do you say that? Do you? I, it would be just easier to push a button or have it set automatic to where you, your your stuff's getting watered. I mean, typically I don't have any issues, um, but come you know like. The, the end of December, January, February, that dry season, I will get out there once a, once a week or once every 10 days and just run the hose. And But it's actually relaxing. I don't mind walking around late evening with the hose, water and stuff. It's not bad. Sure. Do you uh, spray your trees at all? Uh, I haven't in years. Um, I've done, I used to do some copper at one point and I just kind of phased away from it. Um, but I don't really have any you know, any sprays or anything that I've sprayed. Um, as far as fertilizers, um, every once in a while, I'll put a couple of cups around there, but it's like maybe, I don't know, a couple of years since I've really fertilized anything that's established. Um, anything that might be uh, new, I kind of help it along a little bit so, to get it growing. And do you prune your trees? They're due. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, uh, this year I'm going to rent a machine and I'm going to bring all my mangoes down to about 15 feet, 16 feet. So and how often do you do that? Maybe once every five years or so? Uh, I have not actually trimmed them down since they've been here. Oh, okay. So, you know, everything is just needs to really be done. Now we're going to take a look at your trees. I know you have a lot planted in rows. When you planted them, did you have a plan or did you not know what you were doing at that time? Well, I was uh, abiding by what the county uh, requires. Everything's got to be plant planted in a line to be, you know, agricultural because I do have the uh, uh, agricultural classification. So that helps with certain things. Um, and that's pretty much it. I don't, you know, besides, so I did, besides being in a line, did they recommend how far apart to plant them? Well, I did, my rows are 25 feet apart on the mangoes here. Um, and the plants themselves are 15 feet apart. I wish I would have done maybe 20 foot apart rather than the 15, cause they are a little bit, you know, mixed, but you know, if I really wanted to, uh, it's good for cross pollination, cross pollination. So, you know, who knows, I could probably start a new seedling and maybe come up with a new nice variety. Who knows? Okay, you know? so, so you did 15 feet, but on some of them you would have did 20. Yeah, the, 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 the Valencia prides and the bigger trees, but, you know, I would have probably done everything at 20. Sure. We have uh, Namdok Mai, we have uh, Hatcher, we have uh, Neelum, which I don't like personally, um, and the... Uh, we have some uh, rosy golds, which are pretty good. They're usually the, the start of the season. All right, you know? show us your trees, walk us around. All right, here. Well, we can walk around here. Okay. <clears throat> this, is, this here is not a fruit tree. Um, I actually planted it, it's um, called Maya. Uh, the, uh, Chaya. As you can see. Chaya or Maya? Uh, it could be chaya. Yeah, chaya. Yeah. That's what it looks like. Yeah. And they are, there's two varieties of this. There's one that does not flower, and there's one that has a wi much wider leaf, and that's the one people tend to eat more. It's like a spinach. You got to boil it, right? Or yes. poisonous if you don't. Uh, yeah, I believe so. I don't know a whole lot about it. It's okay. not, you know, I, I mainly got it for the, for the flowers. If you look up there, you can see that the, they got bees in there. Oh, okay. You know? flying around it's actually buzzing right now there's probably about i don't know maybe uh 50 60 bees uh wow. going around are we there. safe here with all these bees i'm sorry are we safe here with all yeah these bees? Okay. We're, we're fine so the one that you have here with the did you buy the one with the flowers purposely for that uh actually a friend of mine gave me it and uh she said that you know her the bees really love it and they just so i put it in here and uh and that's pretty much it Okay. So we just put it here and that's what the bees love it. So right. on, the, on this back side, I do have a, a beehive. I just recently got it going. And uh, it's just uh, operational, you know, for the most part, you know, as long as you don't knock on the hive or whatever, you can be in front of the hive and they're not going to get upset, you know, as long as you're not weed whacking or cutting the grass you're usually okay now being this close to the road is that 
okay. I mean, that's fine being this close to the road with the beehive. Uh, yeah, for the most part. Uh, the only problem is, like, if I cut the grass, I mean, I wouldn't walk by right then, you know, but I do smoke them so they don't, you know, it doesn't become a problem. So when you cut the grass, the, it, the noise bothers them just as much? Oh, yeah, they, okay. they kind of bubble out a little bit, and okay. they'll get agitated. But if you smoke them first, you can – basically what I do with all my beehives on the back side over there, I've got over 100 beehives here, um, which we can scan from the edge there later on and because uh, I, I actually raise queens and, and that type of thing. Um, but I smoke them first. That keeps them kind of mellow. But when I cut, I just do a drive-by. You know, I cut and I keep on going. I'll make a long area, make a big circle, and then do another drive by. And that usually, by the time they get, they come out, and then they run back in. You know, they don't, they don't see anything, so they don't get really agitated that way. Great, great. It's best. Now, this is why I came out here, because look at this, everybody. I drove past this, and I saw all these trees lined up here. I didn't know how far apart they were, and I wanted to know, and just all these mango trees lined up. And how old did you say these mango trees were? They got planted in 2004. So, so about 20 years old. Yeah. So these are mango trees, 20 years old. Now, I know you said you have to prune them. How tall would you say they are now? Uh, some of them are about 30 feet. The average is probably about 25. Now, if you would have kept these or pruned them every year and kept them around 10 to 15 feet, do you think they would have been as productive as they are now? Um, I don't really know. They, they, I figure more canopy is probably going to provide more fruit. But then again, how much fruit hits the ground and goes splat, and how much can you actually pick and sell? So that's, you know, yes. the, the difference. Because some people say on the bigger varieties, if you prune them too much, they won't even produce at all. <laughs> but, if, uh, but if they get big, then you got that problem because you got squirrels and stuff on the top and then falling so yeah. yeah when they you know a lot of them at the right time of year just before they get ripe if the wind knocks them down they really don't get damaged um but if they're a little bit ripe and they they get blown out and they hit the ground they just tend to be a big bruise in it or they go splat all right so this is 15 feet show us what you got here okay so this one here is a neelum which it's a late season mango which I really don't like only because this is one reason is they get very ugly pretty quick. Um, and you gotta, I guess you'd have to spray more copper to keep them looking good. And I think they have a very bland flavor. There's not much of a flavor, but it is one of the last ones of the season. That's why I got it originally. I think I'm gonna rework the tree. I'm gonna trim it and wait for new growth and then graft on new and different stuff. Sure. Are you familiar with all the New Zealand varieties that are out now? Uh, I, I like the coconut cream. <laughs> sure. I don't know any of the more recent, I don't know, but the, the coconut cream was probably just starting to come out when I planted my last few trees. Okay. You know. Uh, this one here was actually, uh, this is the first year that I got uh, fruit off of this tree. It was a seedling that a customer of mine gave me. I did pools for years. And um, he, uh, he had this thing in a pot on the side of his house for a couple of years. And it wasn't but about this big around and maybe six foot tall. So I told him I'd try it. And it, it actually came out and had a very nice fruit this year. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. so we'll see. So just to give everybody an example, Neelim is a, kind of on a small side tree in general. But just look at 15 feet, how the canopies intertwine with each other. But on the same hand, these are really... Big trees, tall trees, really tall. Yeah. Okay. And and look how beautiful this is, everyone. Look at the 20, that's 25 feet, you said, between the rows? Yeah, 25 feet on the row, yes. And even at 25 feet, if you leave the trees this high, they still intertwine. So uh, it's, it's uh, you got to do a lot of pruning if you have this many trees, if you want to keep them this close. All right, let's go down the row. Okay. We have some Edwards. Edward. These here are the hatcher. They're a fairly tall tree as well. Do you have problems with the bacterial black spot on the hatcher? Uh, not too bad, but you know, a little bit. Um, you know, uh, the uh, you know the entracnose and whatnot. You know, because I don't use copper, it's prevalent on a lot of the a lot of the fruit. But I try to keep it as natural as possible, even with my nemesis over there. 
We have the squirrels. How are you with critters here? Do you have a lot of critters? Too many. Yeah. So they're they're running around constantly, which is to a point it's okay. You know, if they would only take one fruit and eat it, but no, they got to test twenty of them before they yeah. find the right one. So. So there's a tree right behind you that has some mangoes on it still. Yeah, these are these are the keat. Oh, so these are keats, okay. Um, if the, uh, I guess if we had less of the, uh, the the dew in the morning, they would probably look better. I mean, this one on the ground here, you know, they get a lot of the black, you know, and it's that's woodpeckers. So, um, you know, that's the biggest thing. And I think they're they're due soon. Um, they should be coming in to ripe before too long. Then we have the carries, and what's funny is all three of these were planted all at the same time, and they've all, these two did really well, this one seems a little stunted. Now, do you remember, because I know it, when they're growing, when they're small, if you pick the fruit too soon, it will stunt the tree. Do you remember if you did that on this one? Uh, I have no idea. No, that's a yeah. long time ago. That's too long ago. I think so when I cut them all back, I'll give this one some extra fertilizer, see if we get it kicking sure. in. But it's, like I say, they're, they've been in the ground, you know, almost 20 years. So 15 feet apart, and you're kind of getting an idea how it's going to look if you don't control the trees. These are the uh, ro rosy golds here, these wow. three. Look how big these rosy golds are. Wow. This is considered a, a, a slower growing tree, but again, if you don't prune, look what happens. Yeah, so. and again, this one did the, uh, that third one smaller than the other two. Interesting. Those are my uh, Julies. I got three Julies. How do the Julies do out here? Uh, they do okay if you keep on them. You know, I, I try to pick them right away. You know, look at the difference in the size between the Julie. They're like half the size of the, the, the those, height of the other trees. Those are Mai over there, those yeah. three. Wow, look at the difference. They're, those are dwarf trees. Yeah, and those are all the same age. When I, when I planted them, that's when uh, Hurricane Francis came through, about a, a month or so after I planted them and knocked them all down. Wow. I put them all back up. A little while later, Wilma came through and knocked them all down the other way, put them all back up, and luckily we've been able to keep them up ever since. Uh, these three here are my Valencia prides. Wow. And they are a, a large tree without, you know, you can see the caliper is quite yeah. large compared to everybody else. Wow, so definitely too close on the bigger trees. Yes, like I say, 20, 25 foot would have been, on the run would have been better. And again, everybody, you might be thinking, well, we can just prune the tree every year but on a tree like this if you try to keep a tree like this at eight to ten feet from what i hear is you're not going to get much fruit because these trees want to grow big so that's something to keep in mind okay and that's also another valencia pride over there okay and another neelum that's it on on the mangoes i do have one or two of the uh rosy gold in the back which so we, by rosy gold they, 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 are i'm they, sorry uh, coconut cream coconut cream okay yeah. are rosy gold your earliest mangoes that you have? They're, the, they're the beginning of the season yeah usually the uh they're they're flowering probably beginning of december and they usually have fruit uh towards the middle or the end of may you know they're the the start of the season and they they do have a the intractinose problem they get kind of ugly and fall off if I if they were lower and I sprayed the copper or some type of fungicide they'd probably do a lot better sure yeah. and we look a look at here these are the smaller trees these <coughs> are the uh, Julie's and they grow the trees grow nice the fruit doesn't grow as well on, on Julie's but the trees are smaller trees so these are 20 years 15 feet apart that's you're not going to get away with closer than this unless you prune it. And we don't know how they're going to do if you prune them. So, all right. All right. And there's a bunch of the beehives right over there. Yeah, well, they're empty. That's just honey supers and that type of stuff. Uh, we have uh, um, Jabutkaba. Jabutkaba, okay. Okay. This is my uh, 
pineapple patch that I'm just getting started trying to keep it weeded and and all that type of stuff we have uh, my jackfruit area Is it planted at the same time as the mangoes, the jackfruit? Uh, no, th it, they progressed, you know, over time. This tree here is probably about eight or nine years old. Um, this one came in a little later. Uh, these two were planted at the same time. But uh, my son was probably about eight years old or, or younger, maybe. And he, I told him to go out and... Uh, you know, go to the oak tree and get a branch for the uh, roasted marshmallows. And he took the loppers and lopped the top of the tree, thought it would make a nice marshmallow stick. <laughs> so, but it's grown back. It's, uh, you know, that was back when I was little, but, you know. Now, what, kind, what varieties are these, do you know? Uh, this is called Crunchy Lemon. These two. That one, I'm not sure what it is. Um, it, was, uh, it was given to me and I just started growing it. I got it, the first fruit off of it, two fruit off of it this year, and I wasn't paying attention, and they got too ripe on me, so I didn't really get to taste it for what I think it should be. Now, when you say crunchy lemon, do you like the flavor? Uh, a lot of people like this one a lot. You know, it seems to be, uh, you know, it's not a, a mushy fruit. It's not like an oyster. <laughs> There's know? another a jackfruit called a Bangkok lemon. I hear they're similar to crunchy lemon. Uh, they, they could be. I haven't really tasted a whole lot of lemon. The, okay. the jackfruit, just basically what I have and what I've tasted over the years, you know. Um, these two are also, I just planted them about ah, six months ago. Uh, these were also given to me, a friend of mine. He lives down in Boca. His tree um, has fruit that grows about like this. They're about 70 pounders. Wow. So, I w and um, I'm hoping they're good. <laughs> now, these look like they're 20 feet apart at least. Uh, yeah, they're pretty close to that. Okay. Yeah, I I've, I've grown and learned. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, this one here is the uh, strawberry tree. Yep. Which, again, I just planted it about six or seven months ago. My main reason for planting it is because the, uh, the flowers, um, as you can see, the bees are buzzing around to them. Uh, it's a uh, friend of mine has one. It's about 25 feet tall and probably 25, 30 foot canopy. And uh, they, uh, you know, but the bees, they love the, uh, the flowers. Now your trees that are along the fence or any of these trees even inside, do any, I know you say critters get to them. What about humans? Does anyone take your trees on the outside? Uh, I've actually seen people grabbing. These lychee trees, since I planted them, I think uh, there, this one here I actually brought from uh, Lighthouse Point when I moved up here. And that thing's only given me maybe two, three pounds of fruit. But I have seen people pulling out of the driveway and they're snaking a couple off of there. And I mean, I, I don't even think I've gotten 25 pounds between all the trees. They've never really produced for me. So, okay. and I don't know why, it's just uh, the way it is. So. <clears throat> These are the, uh, the meme, which uh, this one actually has fruit. This is the first one I planted in the ground. I had them in pots for probably, I don't know, 10 years. I originally had this area planted with all citrus. And I just, I would try it and try it, and then I just got tired of trying. And the citrus never really did well. I had one sour orange tree that I, I like the sour orange more than I like anything else just because I use it for cooking. And uh, finally, they, I cut them all down and I planted these. So, so what variety is this? Uh, I'm not quite sure, to be honest with you. It's okay. been so long since I've uh, gotten them, I, I don't remember. It looks like they are grafted, though. They yeah, were. this th these two are grafted. That one was a seedling. I volunteered for the, uh, the, the Rare Fruit Council many years ago. And one of the guys that were selling, selling trees there and whatnot, um, he was from the islands and, uh, you know, I, I actually helped him load or reload his truck with what was ever left and he ended up giving me this tree. And so I finally planted it after it was in the pot for a while and it seems to be growing great, but it's a seedling. Uh, but it tends to be growing better than the others. Uh, sure. 
I saw flowers on it for the first time last year, so hopefully this year it'll flower again and actually get some fruit. How long have they been in the ground? Uh, I would guesstimate uh, roughly about five, six years. Okay. You know, but they were in pots for more than that before. <laughs> you don't put any water on these, you hand water them? They're all hand watered or, and that's it, okay. you know, or, or rain. Okay. <laughs> These are actually the, uh, the long gan on the backside up near the fence. And then I have my avocados. I've actually, uh, this stump is trying to regrow. I'm debating whether to let it go, but the tree itself died. Um, I had a, a seedling that I grew in uh, down south and I waited more than 13 years for fruit and I finally got some fruit and um, I took, uh, and I named it uh, Baxter Brute because they, they, they get up to about four and a half, five pounds. And it's kind of a juicy uh, type um, avocado. Very good. Um, and I actually took it to Excalibur and they took and uh, grafted it. And so they have Baxter Brute there. Um, but something killed the tree. Um, it, there's a bore that yeah. goes in it and shoots yeah. out that little toothpick looking thing. And that basically it killed and wiped out the tree, but this little stub's grown out of the tree. So I'm, I'm going to let it do its thing and see what happens. Um, I lost another one over there because they, they say you got to cut the tree down and grind the stump and get rid of it. Yeah. So um, that was before, this was before I knew that, what it was. So, but since that came out, nothing's happened since, so we'll just let it go. Um, what other avocados do you this have? This is a, Wil a Wilson seedless. Okay. Um, what 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 is the season for that? Uh, right right now, pretty much, it's the squirrels are going nuts on them. Uh, they they usually come in the end of September, you know, or at, mostly the end of September. But this year, it seems a little early. All right, they're pretty big. Yeah. And I, and so are they truly seedless? No, the, why he called it the Wilson seedless is because there's these pickles that develop on the tree that are seedless. And the pickles would get, I don't know, some of them get about like that. You know, they're pretty big. So that's where, and then what's kind of cool about it is you can just slice them up and then spread it on a plate and it, you know, it makes a nice little, you know, rainbow looking thing. But they still have the, some with seeds on them. Yeah, all these have seeds as you can see. Okay. So this is from the squirrels uh, having, wow. their, having their way with it. So then over here we have, uh, I believe this one is the Lula. Lula, okay. And this was Brogdon, Brogdon. which the Brogdon, uh, the, uh, the woodpeckers, this thing went down in a hurry. This thing went down in a hurricane and I put it back up and uh, the woodpeckers have had their way with this thing. Uh, I mean, they've literally, you know, oh, wow. got holes. You know, I thought that it was going to go all the way through. So wow. I don't think this is long for, for living, but it still gets some fruit on it for now. And, uh, and that's it. And how far apart did you plant the avocado trees? Back then I was doing everything 15 feet and then the rows were a little bit further apart than that. So are you in agreement that these avocado trees, anything closer would be too close or do you? Closer than 15 is definitely too close. Um, 20 feet is probably a better, you know, 20 foot radius, 20 on 20 would be more comfortable. I mean, Obviously, you got to figure out what you want to do as far as how much work you want to do trimming the trees. I mean, these trees have not been trimmed, you know, so I need to, you know, I'm going to go in this, this year, I'm going to rent a machine uh, for the week, and I'm going to go through and I'm trimming everything down. Now, for, uh, for, for old trees, these aren't big at all for avocados. Yeah, these trees bigger. aren't quite the, the same as the mangoes, but oh. they are, you know, I had these two trees first. And then they were here for probably about five or six years. And then I planted these trees. These trees are probably 10 or 12 years old. Okay. You know, something to that effect. And you have more avocados there or those long ends? Those are all long gan. Okay. Um, these actually, uh, these long gan trees 
I dug them up um, from Gem Orchids down in Boca when Gem Orchids was down there. They've they've moved to Hawaii, but uh, these were on their property, and I dug them up with a machine and brought them home and planted them. And unfortunately for me, they really haven't produced that much as far as uh, the the long gans. I've gotten a few out of it, but you know, not lots. You know. Okay. These here are my muscadines. These are something I'm really enjoying uh, lately. Uh, this is the last of the season here, but are these are ripe? scoopadons. There was a few more here the other day. So you get a good amount of muscadines every year? Um, with, them? with this row here, it's usually about two, maybe three five gallon buckets worth. Um, I'm actually, these were on the fence line originally and, uh, they, they grew up, but then I got new neighbors and they replaced the fence. So I just kind of leaned it this way and I'm going to try to cultivate it to where I can get it higher because right now I got to sit down on my butt or on my knees and pick the fruit. Um, this is the more traditional way of do it. Um, I, I got them going over here. <clears throat> I just planted these this past summer and these are called Jumbo. This is from uh, a nursery up in Georgia and uh, I just trimmed it. This one here is doing well. I, I, I wish I would have trimmed this one back when I did this one. Um, you just got to be, I guess, diligent and realize that trimming is good. <laughs> you know, everybody, oh, I don't know if I want to trim this or trim that. But the idea is, the guy says to have it about chest height so you can pick the fruit easily and then you can trim stuff. But the idea is to come up to the wire and go out. Ideally, it's supposed to go out 10 foot. And then, so each of your plants are 20 feet apart. So the arms go out 10 feet each way and they fill in and, uh, and then you trim them back every year. Uh, that, that line along the fence line, I haven't trimmed in two years, which when they go dormant, you, you trim it way back. And that's what I, you know. And they lose all their leaves when they go dormant. They, they go, yeah. So how is this holding on? Because this hold on, these, they grab themselves onto the wire, right? Yep, they have one here, you can see. Yeah, so you they, don't even they, have to put them on there. They're they're walking. All right. They do. They, do you keep them at ten feet? Will they go longer if you let them? Or yeah, the ideal. This is your main trunk. Uh, this is actually to here is nine feet because this is what I had the room to allow. Uh -huh. So mine are going to be at nine feet each plant in between. Um, and even if it goes a little bit over and a little bit over, it's not a big deal. Um, but when that goes dormant, is I'm going to cut that so that so that vine doesn't continue and then it's going to shoot out sideways from that point and then you know that that's the uh this is your main structure this is what you trim it back to every year okay you know you start fresh every season and then that way you create more of the um the ideal thing for the fruit to get the larger controllable fruit now i see the poles at the end are the wooden poles and in the middle you use the metal poles is that just preference or can you do all metal or all wood well the those go two feet into the ground they were eight footers um and you got to have a lot of strength to pull this um wire taunt it can't be too crazy this here just helps to support that wire so it's not sagging Got you, got you. It's basically, it's, it's just a support. The other one is your tension. Got you. Okay. Um, you, got, you got two rows of this right now, and you, you have room for more rows. Yeah, I'm going to be trimming the, uh, I was going to get this area going, but I want to cut this pine tree and okay. uh, get it so it doesn't smash stuff when it pieces come down. Okay. So, and then we got the rows of sapodillas. Big sapodilla trees. Again, these need trimming as well. <laughs> Different varieties here or the same? These ones I pay attention to. These two here are the Tikal. Okay. Uh, this one here is OX, Ox. Mm -hmm. And the two on the end are uh, Hasya. 
The hasia and the, t the tikal are probably my larger fruit. Um, I've actually taken off the tikal almost two pounders, which is, you know, one fruit's a lot. Um, they actually just went through their cycle. You can see they're just getting ready to start over. Yeah, and again, uh, these about 15 feet apart. Yeah, and then the rows. I staggered the rows and made them only 20 feet, you know, which I was playing the game. Which if, with these, if I can keep these, start keeping these at 15, 16 feet, then, you know, it would be probably the ideal. Okay. <clears throat> And this one here, this was a seedling I planted. Um, where's the, there's some fruit there. There's probably one getting close. That's about the size that they are when they're ripe. Okay, it's pretty small. Yeah, they're maybe well, almost baby, a pound. Okay, that's a seedling sapodilla. Okay. Yeah. Did you taste any yet? Uh, it's actually very good. Okay, yeah. did you name it? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> then we have... Uh, Start my plantains. This is a, uh, oh, here comes Andrew. <laughs> just ignore him though, he's, okay. he's getting old. He just wants to sniff you. Um, so you got plantains here, okay. Yep, yeah, this is uh, uh, the dwarf Puerto Rican. I just got it from going bananas down there in Miami. Um, it was a long, a long time trying to get them because they didn't have the cycle with the, the COVID and everything like that. They had issues. So finally I got it. And everybody with COVID, everybody went crazy buying fruit trees, you know. Um, we have a macadamia nut. That's a squirrel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of squirrels love that. Yeah, I can't. I, I just get pieces, you know. I don't, you know, they, they get to them way before I do. So... Now we have uh, the dragon fruit here. Um, these are like a red, which I really haven't had good luck with. I got a, a, a Vietnamese variety, which is, um, it's a white fruit, but what's good about it, it, it might have 10 flowers and you get eight or nine fruit out of it, which is better than most. Sure, now um, these poles, how do you, how, how'd you put the poles together? Uh, basically, um, Okay, so you have one and a half is in the ground. And then I just take PL adhesive and uh, glue them together. Okay. okay, so that they, uh, and that's it, they're, they're solid. And you don't put any bar across the top, you just let it I, fall. I never have, it. no. They, eventually the, they build up enough plant material on top to where they're fine. Okay, and, so um, you say some the, of them are fruiting. I see some fruit on this one right here. Yeah. Okay, and no water on these? Uh, no water, just tan water or, or rain. That. Now, how do you uh, keep, keep the weeds out on these? Because if you trim it too close to... to yeah, it's all done by hand. I, no chemicals. I, I don't, I'm not a Roundup fan at all. Sure. Um, so. But it's harder to keep the dragon fruit like weed-free because the pole's in the way. Yeah, it's, it's impossible. Um, it's just, you know, you get dedicated, you, you spend a morning out here, you come through and do three or four. And I mean, I only have this and I have a couple over here on the other side. And how far apart did you plant these? Uh, they're about 10 feet apart and the rows okay. are a little, little more. I wish I had gone another foot off of the fence line because my mower doesn't quite fit. Oh. I mean, it fits here, this one, but where that pole is close to there, it doesn't yeah. fit. Yeah. <laughs> So it's just and how the way many it goes. years before you plant these? You get before you get fruit. Um, these I just planted this uh, this past. Um, let's see, in the springtime I planted them. So hopefully next year they'll uh, they'll start going. And again, I had these in pots for a long time, and this one's starting to shoot out new. This one I'm gonna make another pole. Could I you got have left them in pots. Uh, these were in pots for over a year before I planted them. Would they they were given to me, and then I put them in the pots, and I just didn't have time, and they just sat in the garden area. Do you think if you put the pots in the ground and had a, a pole in the pot, they would fruit as well? I've seen it done that way. Uh, they do it, but I don't think it's gonna be as well, because I mean, when I pulled the weeds out, and 
these guys got roots way out to here, you know? And they're, they're more of a surface area root. They're not like down deep roots, you know? Sure. So I think the wider area they have, the, the stronger the plant grows. Um, originally, I had my dragon fruit running this way and I had put one right here next to the tree and you can see this tree used to be covered in dragon fruit all the way up to the top. Wow. But I've, I've ripped a lot of it down and that's the part that I haven't been able to reach. Why did you rip it down? Well, because it's not going to fruit. They, the, and the variety that I had was the American variety. And I'd have 100 fr uh, flowers and I'd get one fruit, two fruit. It just wasn't very you good. You can't get the fruit if they're that high either. <laughs> yeah, no, this is like five foot is the ideal is from what I've understood. Okay. You know. Now I see some star fruit here. Yeah. These trees, I got them uh, from Excalibur. And uh, they, uh, this is the uh, uh, bell, okay. which they, they're very nice. Uh, the other one is an Arkin, and then the other one's a bell. Probably. I've had a couple of others that have died off. I had a shrink and bang that I liked a lot, and then it died. Uh, for some reason, I haven't figured out, I've asked around what this problem is here. Um, and it's a deficiency of some sort. And that one's real bad, and it's starting to die off, I think. I've tried uh, magnesium around it, it seemed to help, and then boom, it goes right back to that. And that one looks like it's getting affected now too. Well, if any of the viewers know what this might be, let us know. This is uh, These leaves look like they're deficient in something. Yeah, I mean, it's got new growth, but... But the fruit, the fruit's good on these? Uh, yeah, very good. You get a good amount? Oh, I got so much I can't, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> You know, that's constantly dropping. This one here is actually so far set back that it's actually not got fruit right now. Okay. You can see these ones have nice fruit up top. Yeah. And this one here, I just don't. Um, I'll try hitting it with some more fertilizer, some more uh, uh, magnesium and see what happens. Now I see there's a horse your neighbor has. Yeah. Do you use any of the horse poop at all or no? Um, I don't. Um, I guess I could. Um, originally, when I made some compost, I've gone over there and added to it and you know helped out that way a little bit, but not a lot. You know, that was more like years ago than, you know. Sure. Yeah, have some native pines you have here. Yeah. These were on the property. And we have the sour sop. How does that do? Uh, we get fruit twice a year. Um, it's just starting its uh, winter crop. Is this a seedling or a, a grass? Uh, this was a seedling. Oh, nice. So it, it took a long time before I got fruit, but now once it started, it does it twice a year. Very nice. And they're actually fairly good size. Um, they get about like that, you know, they're fairly large. Um, then back here, we got a couple more dragon fruit. The aloe. And then we have uh, moringa. Moringa. Which, which the bees actually love the flowers. Uh, they're good to eat, you know, the leaves, tea, and supposedly the roots and all that. Um, this here is allspice. The other one over there is uh, bay rum. And then uh, I've actually started growing a little yucca. Yucca uh, is kind of funny though. You got to pick it and you got to eat it. It can't sit out for very long. Uh, unless you know how to dip it in the wax and whatnot. Because uh, I picked it out a couple few days later, you go to break it, and it's all turning black inside. Had to use it right away, yeah. Yeah. So, another uh, tree that I just got going, it's another type of a uh, um, plantain. This one here is supposedly rhino horn, which I was uh, 
really shocked at the price of banana plants lately. Yeah. You know, usually before you used to get them for about ten, fifteen dollars. Now they're up to fifty bucks. It's like wow. So and that's my vegetable garden over there, which I haven't gone through um, in a while, so it's well overgrown. One of the reasons why it's overgrown is because we've got our seminal pumpkins have just kind of decided to grow everywhere. So this is like our fourth or fifth fruit that we've gotten off it, which is funny when they grow like this and they're cradled, they have like this oval shape. Then over here, this one's hanging, but you gotta get through the forest because we haven't weed whacked because of the pumpkin, but... Uh, Wow, look how big that is. Like, And this is whoa. just hanging. Whoa. It's actually getting so heavy, it's pulling the vine down. Like a mole mole. <laughs> yeah, but it's got the, the neck yeah. on it. Very interesting. Very interesting. And this thing here is your Hong Kong orchid, which is probably evasive, but... Orchid? Yeah. Okay. Uh, they It actually blooms like November through January or November through March, I'm sorry. And what's nice about it is the bees work the flowers. And that is typically when there is no real flower nectar source for the bees, so it, it, it's an additive. So it definitely helps. Um, now we're back over to where the bees are. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it on camera, everybody, but there's a bunch of bees flying around over there. You How do your neighbors feel about the bees? I'm sorry? How do your neighbors feel about the bees? Well, I got a brand new neighbor there. They moved in last week, so we're, we're testing the waters. <laughs> uh, this neighbor, they're, they're aware of it. They've, you know, they get, they've been stung a couple times, but they realize what it is, and you give them honey, and you know, usually everybody's good to go. <laughs> Um, it's not like the bees are over there constantly harassing or anything like that, so, but, uh, so we're safe to walk here? You can come up to here. I'm not worried about okay. me. Okay. Um, right but look at that. Wow. This is all my mating area. This is where I mate my queens. I have grafting that I do. I make queen cells and I sell queens as well. So. Now, when you say you're not worried about you, it used to be you're just used I, to the I get, I get stung every day, so it's not, even if I do get stung, sometimes I don't even feel it. Okay. You know, so it also depends where I get stung. Sure. I got stung right, right under here the other day. That one I definitely felt. Wow. <laughs> so, and that's pretty much. Uh, you have a lot of space here. Do you perfect? Did you purposely just leave it empty for just the space, or are you? My, my wife in? demands having her zone around yeah, the house. Sure. sure. <laughs> now, are you on septic here or city water? Uh, we're on a well, and we're on septic. So, where's your drain field? Drain fields out front, the big bald area. Not bald, but grass area so, out so front. So you left the grass because you don't want to plant over a drain field, right? Exactly. I don't want to have to redo it, and roots will tear up the pipes and all that type of stuff. All right, great. So. so uh, I know you don't have a big, you have a good variety, but there's so much more you can plant. Is there anything you want to get that you haven't in terms of different varieties of things? Um, I really don't have that much more room left. I mean, I have on the back side of the pond, which is like a work zone area right now. And I wouldn't want to take you back over there. There's a lot of bees over there. So um, I have some sapodillas over there. That's where I have my coconut cream, uh, mangoes. Um, but I really don't have too much more area that I want to plant trees. I mean, it took me, it took me probably a week to try to figure out where to plant these six banana plants that I got. <laughs> that, Cause they take over. They do. You got to stay on them. They, people don't realize how much work banana plants are. Yeah. And then when they're ready, you got to cut down the stalk and. Yeah. And then feed the quorum, you know? Yeah. Well, here we are, everybody. This is the property and I'm going to put the contact information uh, for Eric below here uh, with his information for his company if anyone wants to get honey Do you sell anything else eggs uh, or anything? Else? Well, no, we used to have chickens. We finally outgrew that one uh, They that just became so much to feed them anymore and then the egg value just wasn't It's almost cheaper to go have somebody else raise eggs and get them from them 
But you know, as far as uh, the company, it's Baxter's Bees Honey and More. Um, and we sell fruit, we sell honey, I sell beehives, queens, and uh, that's pretty much it. If what's, you, what's the best way to get people to get in touch with you? Do you have a website or is it the phone number? What's the best uh, way? The best, the best way is uh, my phone number, 561-294-7665. Okay. Um, that's the best way you can call or text. Um, you can Google Baxter's Bees, Honey and More, it'll come up. Um, I'm not real web savvy or uh, tech savvy, so you know if you want to get a hold of me, phone number is the ultimate. Um, and we do a lot of bee removals. We take bees out of people's houses. Uh, I do high-rise buildings out of trees. I've I've taken bees out of the uh, the stadium lights uh, for the for the baseball fields. They're like 90 feet up. They lift me up on a crane, and up I go, and it's it's pretty uh, pretty intense when, when you you're go up out there. there. Do you go with a suit, a suit and everything? Uh, usually, I have a long sleeve work shirt, uh, like a dicky work shirt, and my veil, long pants. Um, I typically don't get suited up with the uh, the moon suit or like a, a, an actual bee jacket, unless the bees are very aggressive. That's about the only time I put on on that type of equipment. Well, how do you know until you see them? You don't. You, okay. you can't tell by looking uh, till you tickle them a little bit, see what see what they say, then they they let you know. Okay. Are you able to identify the queen if you're looking? Oh, I can find the when I when I see her, I know she's the queen. Okay. Um, sometimes they're a little more challenging. Queens can vary in color. They can go from a black queen to a bright orange or a yellow queen, um, and anywhere in between. Um, the uh, and they also can be fairly small. Some of them, I've seen good laying working queens that are just a little bit bigger than the workers. And you, and there's like amazing how the brood and everything and how big the hive is and you got this little tiny queen just working away. So is that your goal in cleaning them up is finding the queen and getting it out or is it go beyond that? Uh, depends on the removal that you're doing. Um, when, when you're in a soffit, or you're in a tight squeezed area that you can't really have a whole lot of control. I have a special vacuum that I built that will vacuum the bees into a cage to confine the, the bees in a cage. And then after that, you know, I just remove the comb and scrape it clean. And then a repair guy has to come back, you know, contract or whatever the homeowner decides needs to come back and do a repair. Um, but as far as the removal, when, when I'm cutting the comb out, if I find the queen, I will cage her because it makes my job a little easier when I get home because then I just got to dump the bees on the ramp, put the queen in the box, give them a frame of eggs and larvae in the new box. All the bees run up in there and, and that's it. Then I'm done. I'm just curious. How does somebody learn all that about being, uh, whether it's called a beekeeper or a bee remover? Well, Are there there's... schools for that or do you just do it through self-practice? Self I started out 15 years ago, actually about 16 years ago, started doing bee removals. Um, I actually had bees take over barbecue grill. I got a hold of Palm Beach County beekeepers. And at the time, um, the president at the time was Uta. She has passed since then. Uh, and she actually kept the club going for years and years and years uh, when there was only 10 or 15 members. Uh, now we're up over uh, probably close to 200 and some members. We've been stronger before COVID. Um, and the, uh, but anyway, there was a guy that lived around the corner from me, Len Kahn, and he actually came out and removed the bees. A couple of months later, um, I kind of missed having the bees, so I contacted him and I bought my first beehive, and it just started rolling from there. And then he asked me to give him a hand doing a bee removal. And then I actually cool. changed from, I did pools for 25 years. I serviced and did repairs. And uh, I just got rid of that business and started in the bee removal. Sure. Now, just people like myself, I live in a residential area. Are you allowed to have beehives or is there certain uh, The state um, has passed laws that uh, if you are, the only, the only location that you cannot have hives is if you are in a, um, an HOA. HOAs can tend to... Um, make it so you can't because it's in their bylaws but as far as like the city of boca or the city of boynton or delray they can't technically uh say you cannot have bees because the state has laws you have the right to farm act which is all part of that big window that actually allows you to process honey and and that type of thing there are regulations and they're pretty strict on it 
You can't have your beehive within, I believe it's eight or 12 foot of your fence line. Um, and then you have to have, sometimes depending on your area, you have to have a six foot fence around your beehive. You know, so the bees, when they come out of the hive, they have to go up and out, which helps keep, protect your neighbors from nuisance bees. And there's, there is, you know, regulation. You're only allowed to have, I believe it's three hives and a quarter acre residential lot. Got you know, it. so it's all, there's, there is regulations, okay. but you can have a couple of hives and enjoy the honey. So a lot of people I interview, <laughs> they, they, they're getting new, they're new to growing fruit trees. You've obviously been doing this for a long time, at least 20 years. What are your top three tips for people that want to grow fruit trees? Ah, it's a lot of work. Be prepared. Um, and sometimes it's a little bit disappointing because you think you're going to get something and you don't. So you got to have perseverance. And, um, you know, just uh, take the time, um, go to some meetings. Um, you got the Rare Fruit Council, a lot of people over there that can, can help you out. Uh, clubs, you know, get, find a mentor maybe, uh, read some books. You know, those are the, the top things to really, you know, get into it. Um, I personally try to stay away from Roundup and, and all those other types of nasty things. I don't even, I don't like to use a whole lot of fertilizer because I want the trees to be more self-sufficient, but they do get a little, a little help for me from time to time. Um, and that's, that's it pretty much. What would be your, your top, don't do these things for people, like the mistakes that you've made or you see people making? Uh, I've drove by a, quite a few properties and I see the trees planted close together. I mean, within like six eight feet of each other and and then i've seen people where they they've actually dug holes and they plant the tree and when they fill the dirt the hole is still there and then your root come up so it's like a bowl which is bad for the tree um pretty much with all these trees i started out i dug a three inch hole i took took the pot off they all started in three gallon pots i put that there then i back filled up to the top of the tree and then I, I have added dirt over the years, so now you can see they're not too wavy over there, but it's, uh, the trees have done well. Um, so digging them down deep is not good. Uh, mulching does help, but once you get started on it, it's kind of a, a habit at that point. You got to maintain it. Um, weed whacking. Bad around the trees. Um, I, you know, I hand pick a lot of it, or I'm very, very gentle with the weed whacker. I've seen over the years, I've seen people wonder why their trees looking so bad, and you go look at it, and their lawn guy or themselves have been weed whacking around the tree, and they just they scalp the tree every time they go around, and the tree, you know, it's like imagine taking a weed whacker to your ankle. It doesn't feel good. The trees don't like it. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us come on out. Alrighty, you're All right. welcome. Alright everybody, that was Eric and his information is going to be below his contact information for his bee removal company. And if you're in a local area and you want to get some honey, definitely contact him and support these local uh, businesses here. But those trees are amazing. This video was very eye-opening. As I said in the video, I interview a lot of people who are new to this, uh, growing trees. But he's been doing it for 20 years or so, many of these trees never pruning them and you're seeing the problem you could run into so uh, i definitely recommend staying up on your trees if you have trees but it's always uh, easier said than done but this was a nice video i got some answers that i've been wanting to get and i'm glad we we got this down if you have comments or questions post them below and if you have a house or local house and you're growing trees or you know a local farm and you'd like me to come on out my email is below in the description i'd love to come on out especially if you're in the south florida area uh, so please do contact me and uh, let's set something up so i can come on out until then everybody thank you for watching please subscribe if you're not subscribed have a great day, everybody, and keep growing.